Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Bolt Action Basics, uh, the show that is for the newbies, the, the, the new to wargaming or just simply the new to Bolt Action and hopefully this series will give you um, plenty of um, help and advice uh, about understanding the game of Bolt Action and, and, and helping you to have a good time playing the game because um, that's obviously you know why we play it, we, we want to have a good time and, and enjoy the hobby. So um, today's episode uh, is is kind of inspired by a question that I, I saw pop up on the Bolt Action Facebook page, um, and I thought it would make a great um, video, particularly in 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 the kind of early stages, um, because uh, quite quite simply, it's a question that beginners need to know. And the question was, what is required? What units are required um, in a basic army? Um, so before we get on to that, I just want to give you a little bit of background on um, on uh, bolt action as a game. You know what is the setup of it? Obviously, it's a miniatures game. Um, it can be played in in many different scales. Um, probably the smallest you I've seen played is fifteen mil, um, and I've seen it played probably. I, I, I would imagine you could probably go to fifty four mil. Um, and and that's you know the the scales match it basically when I say fifteen mil I mean from he, uh, from foot to or ground level to eye level is fifteen millimeters um, figure that most people play twenty eight mil and that's these guys so from his eyes to his feet uh, is twenty eight millimeters and and the twenty eight millimeters uh, represents basically six foot so in this one to 56 scale uh 28 millimeters is roughly six foot um and obviously if you then go on and finally build terrain that's something that you need to know um so it it has been described as a skirmish game now uh obviously there's debate about whether it is or isn't some people would say skirmishes maybe less figures um others might say that it is a skirmish game because uh, of the level that it's played on now often in wargaming you will find that uh, games are on a specific level generally so for example napoleonics is often played at say brigade level where you have maybe several brigades um, and, and or you know and brigades filled up with regiments and uh, and and one figure represents far more figures than it would if you were looking at a squad level game um, now a squad level game you might see something like uh, chain of command um, although that may also be platoon level but um, you, you might look at squad level a uh, squad level skirmish game like uh, sharps rifles uh, which is uh, basically it's a Napoleonic skirmish game um, and that's very good um, but then you might see other games that are the smaller so I guess the smallest game I mean other than an individual which you might then call a squad level um, so the basic level is a squad level that's the smallest you look at maybe 10 guys aside um, then you move up to platoon level now platoons are made up of several squads and a platoon command section or a platoon command group that is where bolt action is aimed at so you're looking at bolt action for your army to be several squads a command section maybe some support weapons and maybe a little bit of transport or armor depending on your scenario above that is company level where you're looking at several platoons now my big uh, game that i'm planning to play at oklahoma city uh is multiple uh, multiple platoons. Uh, we have a platoon of French, a platoon of German, uh, sorry, a platoon of Belgians, a platoon of uh, British, and two platoons of Germans. So it, it's it's a bigger scale, um, and that's possibly the kind of exception in bolt action. There's not a lot of games out there um, played on a regular basis that plays at that sort of scale. Most are probably a platoon per side. Um, after platoon, we have companies where we're companies made up of multiple platoons. Um, don't tend to see a lot of that in bolt action, but you do see some. Um, and really, then above company level, you're looking at battalions or regiments or you know 
and 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 that's not really a game that um, I've ever seen play with bolt action rule set. Um, you might see that in Black Powder or Hell Caesar or um, any of the other um, primarily um, Napoleonic games and maybe ancient games where you're looking at large armies. Um, so th so that's the kind of if you're thinking in terms of military size. That is where bolt action is. It's a platoon level game. And I think it's important to clear that up um, before going too much further. So, back to our question of what do you need? Well, with a platoon, as I've said before, you need a couple of squads and you need um, some sort of command unit. Now, um, all of the armies pretty much, I mean, I've had a scan through all of the army list uh, books. Um, and from what I can see, it appears to me that all armies, no matter what theatre selector or which nation, they all require a minimum of two sections or squads and one command team. Now your command team can be as simple as one figure and you require a lieutenant, whether it's the first lieutenant or a second lieutenant. So for my British Expeditionary Force, I have this guy. Um, depending on how many points I want to spend on him, depends whether he's a first lieutenant or second lieutenant. And that does make it a difference to his um, his morale and, and the influence he has on his troops. Um, I can have up to two additional guys with him. So I've got a, an additional rifleman and a sergeant major to go with him. But you don't have to. You could have him by himself. You could have him with one extra guy or the maximum of two extra guys. Um, and then I need two sections. Now, um, depend, depending on the scenario that you're playing and the theatre selector you're using will depend whether he's inexper whether, whether they are inexperienced regulars or veteran units. But for now, we're just going to take the basic unit. OK, um, now the bare minimum, I believe, for most nations is five men in a section. You're looking for four. Um, generally they're riflemen, um, some countries allow you to have one with an SMG, and then you have your um, uh, squad leader, okay, your NCO, your non-commissioned officer, and he's in charge of the squad, uh, and he's quite important because if he goes down dead, then it, it mucks up people's morale. So you can have uh, a minimum of five people per squad. You can also get more. I think for the British, you go up to 10. Um, I think the Americans might be 12 in a squad. Um, the Russians, I believe, are even more. I think you can get up to 14 or 15 in a squad. Um, but that's something that you have to check out. And and I would, I would highly recommend um, picking up the army book for um, your particular country that you want to um, build your, your force from. Um, another useful tool is to go to Google um, and to type in Easy Army Bolt Action, uh, all separate words, and that'll take you to a website. And that has uh, basically, you, you register, you, you, um, you lock, you, I don't know what to do, sign up for it? Yeah, you sign up for it, it is free. Um, and then you can log in and you can create army lists. And it, it does have a lot of the list, it doesn't have all of the lists, and also it doesn't have these, some of the extra parts that the books have. So um, I really like the books, I, I think they're great. Um, and, and I also use the computer, the internet um, website as well to kind of make it a bit quicker than writing it down on paper. So, you know, there's sort of swings and roundabouts to both of them. Um, so that's your basic setup, a command unit and two sections or squads. Now, on top of that, most um, selectors will allow you to add additional squads if you wish. Um, you can add support groups. So you could add a machine gun team or a mortar team or a anti-tank rifle team, various other aspects. You can also add a command team to your platoon. Um, uh, like a headquarters section that might be a, a, a bigger group um, perhaps with a captain or a major um, or you can have a medic in there as well or some sort of observer whether it's a, um, an artillery observer or, or a, um, a air observer um, and you and you can use those to um, to help you when you get into combat and they, they improve your dice rolls a little bit um, by giving you modifiers. 
And then on top of that, you can add some artillery um, and you can also add some vehicles. And often you might get something like a, some sort of a, to choose one vehicle in a, in a light armored vehicle and also a tank and, and a, choose a second tank to go with it. Um, some let you, some don't. Um, and, and and having the books and looking at the, the theater selector is a really good way of making sure that, you know, that if you are playing a particular scenario, your list is accurate to that. And it, it helps to balance up the game. So um, that's the kind of basis of an army. So whether you're um, deciding to buy metal figures, um, just remember you need two sections and a command unit um, to start. Um, or if you bought a box of plastic figures and you're, you're getting ready to put them together, um, but you're not quite sure, you know, what you should have. Um, again, check the books because it, you know, it gives you allowances whether, you know, how many guys can you have with a, a submachine gun? How many guys can have rifles? How many anti-tank weapons can you have in a section? How many um, light mortars could you have, for example? How many uh, light machine guns can you have? And those are the sort of things that um, if you don't know before you start building your figures, then you may build them and find that actually you're not allowed to have that in your section. And, and if you're sticking to the rules quite specifically, then 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 that can be an issue. Of course, if you're not, then build them however you like. Um, I myself try to stick to a historical setup. Um, I, I don't make it too gamey. Um, I like to, you know, question, could I win a battle with a, the army from that time? And, and that's what I go for. Um, so yeah, um, we'll check out in, in future videos and hopefully I'll get one up um, shortly as well um, on building plastic figures. Uh, that That's my job for this week is to build a bunch of plastic figures for my own army. Uh, but I, I will be doing not only um, a tutorial, uh, which will I will throw in somewhere. Um, actually, it'll be in a Bolt Action Basics video. Um, but I will also um, do a, a video um, no, that's that's the video I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Bolt Action Basics video on building these plastic figures, and I'll probably do a review of the 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 figures that I'm doing as well. So, lots to do this week for me. Um, hopefully, you've liked this video. Um, hopefully, it's been helpful and answered a few questions. Um, please, if you uh, have found this helpful, please like it. Uh, leave some comments uh, if you want to more answers. Uh, quick more questions answered uh, in future videos please uh, you know put those down in the comments box um, and I will oh and, and also please feel free to subscribe uh, to the channel um, so that's it from me and I will see you uh, soon with either another product review update on my main project or even another bolt action basics so until then take care and we'll speak to you soon okay